Hello, hello. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm just fine. Happy to be speaking with you this morning. Yes, likewise. Uh, I'm very uh, excited for this call and uh, have been trying to get my brain all energized and, <laughs> and ready to talk about the movie. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm so glad because I'm ready to talk about this movie. This is a fantastic first feature debut, not just for you, but for Adam and Marcus, and of course, Michael and Lizzie. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we, so we, the film um, releases today, and uh, you know, it was, uh, it's, a, it's a East Coast, West Coast thing, so at uh, midnight East Coast last night, it was available uh, if you pre-ordered it, uh -huh. and so we all, we all ended up watching it, and we're texting each other back and forth about it, and you know, I think that, um, I 100% agree with you, uh, I think that, you know, Michael and Lizzie are just uh, incredible actors and they do such an amazing job with this. And, I mean, you know, it, it, that's made easier by the the, real, the truly, truly great material that, um, that Adam and Marcus uh, put together for this project. Um, and, and I'm just so glad to have been able to be a part of um, bringing it to life, bringing it to screen. And, and I think that um, I was, I was, I was, very, very happy and very proud of the product that we made when I finished watching it again last night. Well, you should be. And I find it really interesting because for the past few years, uh, and even just before the pandemic, as Uber and Lyft and ride shares were becoming more and more popular, we started seeing a lot more films, independent films being made of ride share pickups, focused, you know, everybody's just in a car. Not a rideshare film, but I think one of the best examples of a film that is shot totally within a car is Locke with Tom Hardy and uh, what Steve Knight did. But so many of these rideshare films, yeah, they look glossy. Yeah, they did them at night to add some spook and terror to it. But there wasn't really anything, in many cases, creative about it. What I love and what stands out here, Drew, and this is a testament to you as a director, you even as, as much time as we are in the car, you definitely change up your camera angles. You and your DP, Anthony Coons, you make use of the rear view mirror. You make use of the side mirrors. Then you you give us moments where we get to stretch our legs, such as, you know, anybody on a long road trip would be stretching theirs. But you keep us visually engaged, and you go from close-ups, close-ups on just eyes in the rear-view mirror, be it, Liz, be it Allison looking in or Mike looking at the mirror to see if he can see what Allison is doing. It's really interesting the way you have shot this and the way you've cut it and put it together to keep us visually engaged. For production values, that, I think, is your strongest suit. Well, th thank you for saying that. I, I, um, you know, I, I do think it, it is a differentiator um, with our film. Uh, you know, when Anthony came on board and we started talking about this project, um, you know, that was, it was one of the biggest things uh, that was on our mind was how do we, there's so much time in this car, how do we keep things visually interesting? And I think, um, you know, I give all of the credit of that to Anthony because he really digested the script and tried to understand, you know, what, how are we going to feel if the camera is positioned here, positioned here, positioned here. And obviously, um, you know, we, we did this whole thing on a process trailer, so we did have a little bit more flexibility in, in what we could get, mm -hmm. um, but still very limited because, you know, the, it's uh, we're driving, right? And, right? and even though the actors aren't driving, there is a, uh, there, it's still dangerous. And so we, we wanted to make sure that everything that we were doing uh, the cast and the cast was safe. The crew was being safe, um, and but that we were able to capture um, some really uh, emotive imagery. And I think that um, what what I'm so appreciative of, of what Anthony brought to the table is that when I did get to the editing room and was able to sit down with the footage, 
I really had every tool I needed to tell this story um, in an effective way. And I think that, um, you know, um, to your point about the, the use of the close-ups and, the, and, the, and where the, the camera was placed, I mean, it, there's, there's purpose uh, behind every shot. And there's mm-hmm. a reason why, we, you know, when I'm using this, this image of, you know, um, <clears throat> the passenger looking at Allison from the back seat in the rearview mirror, um, there, there's, a, I, there's a moment where we actually transition in the film to where I start using um, Lizzie, yep. uh, Lizzie Zarebko, I start using her uh, and, and Allison looking in the rearview mirror versus the passenger looking at her. And so it is really being able to um, think about these things up front and have someone as skilled as Anthony um, being able to get in there and really give me everything that I needed was, uh, was an incredible experience. I'm so impressed by that because I know with Locke, I think I recall Steve telling me he had 16 cameras placed within a car with oh, Tom wow. Hardy. I, everywhere you could think of, there were little GoPros and, and things within the car. I know you did not have that financial luxury, <laughs> which, you know, which makes this work even more impressive. And the way that you do use some extreme close-ups, such as with the cigarette lighter, tiny little things that people aren't really going to, at first blush, they might gloss over. Or not think, it's like, okay, why? Who cares? But those quick moments make all the difference in the world and everything is a breadcrumb to the ultimate story. And yeah, what happens? Right. And, 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 you know, it, it was funny when I was watching it last night, just a quick anecdote. Um, I, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't pause the film when I was, uh, when I was texting, you know, the team mm-hmm. um, about some thought or something like that. And uh, when I looked back up after saying my, me- like writing out my message, um, I had missed something. Yeah. And this happened multiple times. And, and I, I made this comment to the, to, the, to the team that was, you know, if you really have to pay attention in this movie. Uh-huh. If, if, you, if you're doing a, a, a two screen situation, if you're trying to write an email or you're trying to text someone on the side, you will miss some sort of detail um, like the cigarette lighter that um, that is uh, actually important to the storytelling, um, which which I, I I didn't it was my it was the realization that I had just for the first time last night and and it was something that I think is is um, very exciting and and kind of important to uh, to know about this film is, is that you you really have to watch it. You absolutely do, and I love your comment about the one moment where the ECUs shift and we're no longer really seeing Mike looking in the rearview mirror to try and see Allison's face and what Allison doing and suddenly it's Allison looking to see what Mike is doing in the back seat. And that is just so pivotal because you have the film just totally flips itself on its head then. And we, right. we go in a new direction, and you're sitting there, and you're going, oh, my God. Because based on the performances up to that point, you got this expectation, as with so many films you know, like this or terror films, thrillers like this, okay, somebody in the car is getting killed. All right, it's a girl. Girl's going to go bye-bye at some point. She's going to get robbed. She's going to get slashed. You know, she had a really nice car. The guy may be a killer. He's going to kill her, take the car, and go off on some spree or something. Right. And what you do with Adam and Marcus's script, you turn us on our heads. You totally flip the script. And then you're sitting there going, oh, my God, now what's going to happen? Right. one of those things, so uh, I, what I really love about this film, because I think the, the twists and turns that the story takes, it was something that um, everyone who read the script, you know, was, was immediately absorbed into it. And, and I think capturing that was extremely important to me, making sure that I was um, <clears throat> visualizing you know, how uh, Adam and Marcus crafted this story. Mm-hmm. And so 
we took a lot of care, you know, with the performances to really craft what was going on, both on the surface and what was happening with the text, but yeah. then also the internal lives of these characters and how they change throughout the story, and, and we and we learn more about them. And <clears throat> that was um, a, a difficult process, and one that that we we took a lot of care with because we 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 never wanted to lie to the audience it was always it was always very important to me that when you're seeing uh <clears throat> the passenger you you understand who this person is on a surface level and then as you get to know him you understand where where the kind of the onion the layers get pulled back same thing with allison and i think after you watched it and you go back there there uh, you know last night when i was re-watching it i was seeing things that uh, that I had uh, remembered um, putting into the edit because I love them, um, but that they were even surprising to me again. That I was, when you know what's going on, it's a different story, and that's I think what's really fun about this film. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I mean, I definitely am going to watch it yet again because there is so much. There's a lot of metaphor happening in here, but there's so much subtext within each of the characters, within Mike and Allison, and even some of the supporting players. Yes. Our detective is just an interesting character. Ryan uh, Forrestal's portrayal of Detective Hartford. Interesting. He's almost like a MacGuffin thrown in here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ryan was so much fun to work with, and, uh, and you know, I think finding him, he, he's a... Uh, He's local to Orlando, and I think, you know, finding him um, <clears throat> uh, in the casting process is just, it, he's such a gem, and, and I think that he worked so well uh, for that role and really embodied who I, I wanted Hartford to be. And, um, you know, when, when he's, we, there's so much more to that character that mm -hmm. I think we weren't able to put into this film in, in terms of the runtime, in terms of really just, you know, where we need to be focused on the story that, um, you know, I, I loved how much of that, I think, um, just drove uh, Ryan's portrayal of the character. And, uh, and even though, you know, you, you don't, you, you will never ne necessarily know that character's backstory, um, it's there. And I think that's what, what uh, helps to create the atmosphere and the depth uh, of, of all of the characters in the film. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you give us another fun character, and you're wondering what the hot, what the heck, and that is our wonderful gas station stop and shop <laughs> clerk, Colin, who is just you just want to reach in and just grab that little jerk and and like shake him. I know of nowhere in the world where you're going to have a guy come out to your car at midnight at night or one o'clock in the morning. They stay safely ensconced inside their little mini marts at night. They don't come out. But he's got to be out there, and he's got to interject his own opinion into everything. He really cut the tension after what had just happened and the shift that we're seeing within the story. And yeah. I, I thought it was really interesting and quite entertaining. We get, we get, we get some interesting reactions to, uh, to the character, and I think... Um, you know, for for me, uh, there's a there's a lot of different ways that I think um, that role could have been portrayed. Mm -hmm. But I really think that, um, to your point, it, it, it was important. I think that we create some levity in the story and have have like allow the audience just a moment to break from from the yeah. intensity uh, that we've been witnessing. You know, for the last forty five minutes, an hour of the film, and uh, because because you know, think we're about to turn it back up. And, and I think that um, the scene really uh, does that in an effective way. And, and uh, it, was, it was just so much fun working with that group and, and putting, um, uh, putting those lines on screen. Um, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a, a very fun night for all of us. My favorite line in the whole film is, do I get a reward? <laughs> and, but that's just so human nature at the same time. That's one of the great things that you do, Drew, and that what Michael and Lizzie bring this film is so much about human nature. So much about human nature. It actually is a great character study as we see the di different types of people 
how they react, what they do, what their level of mental fragility and stability is. It's very much, this really takes a look at human nature. And I find that so fascinating. It, it does, you know, and I think that there's, there's, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of themes at play here. And, and there's, there's a lot that we wanted to talk about um, in terms of both uh, social commentary and, uh, you know, uh, really dig into what we kind of are, are thinking about and feeling, you know, as a, as a culture right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that, um, you know, to your point, there's, we, we weren't trying to, it, it, it's a fine line because we are creating something that is, uh, supposed to mainly be entertaining. Yeah. You know, um, the, the, you know, this isn't a documentary. Um, but at the same time, you know, we wanted these characters to feel real. We wanted these characters to, to be, to be people, um, you know, someone who you might know in life or someone yes. that you might have gotten into a car with. And in order to do that, you, you really have to, um, create a, a, a an inner life um for for these individuals and i think um you know adam and marcus uh you know touched on things like drug abuse mm -hmm. and mental health and you know we we're not we're not trying to solve these problems we're not trying to comment on these problems um or or really drive uh you know awareness in a way to to you know, cr create help for people. We're using them as functions of our story. But I think even even in in that the simple nature of our approach to that, it, it does actually create a, a positive awareness to, um, hey, you know, like you never know what another person is going through. Yep. And I think that there's there's just so much of that in the story. So many of these characters, um, you just discover something new about them. Um, that surprises you. And I think that's what keeps the momentum driving the story forward. Yeah, it, it's the unpredictability of human nature. Exactly. That That's what keeps it going. And I have to say, for your first direct feature directorial, number one, it's very ambitious with night shoots. Number two, it's very ambitious with so much shot within the interior of moving vehicles. But then you also, you give us some incredible going through the car wash that is such a stunning scene the way that you and anthony make use of all the colors anybody's ever gone through a car you know a bubble wash a self bubble wash and the car moves along or you drive it through and you have all the colors of the wax and the soap and the dry stuff and it's pink and yellow and blue and green and then you pop it with blood mixing with the soap bubbles it is a it's a beautiful scene to watch, Drew. I got to tell you. We, it was. Uh, I think. I think. I. I actually sent a message to the team last night saying, "This. This is the most visually stunning scene in the film." Yes. Uh, when when I was watching it, um, it. You know. I, I mean. I, I. I appreciate you saying that. I. I just had. You know. I, I. What I told Adam and Marcus as they were developing the script is is forget the budget. Don't worry about it. Put, put what you want to put in this film and we will find a way to make it work. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, obviously making a movie, is, it, it's about problem solving. And, you know, we weren't able to do uh, every single thing that was in the original script. But I think that um, I just had so much faith in the, uh, the, the crew that we had put together, um, the entire cast, that when it came to... Uh, a challenge like doing night shoots um, or, uh, <clears throat> you know, trying to fit every, all of the pieces that we wanted to fit into the, uh, a, a very limited schedule. Um, I, I was not, there was just no concern for me um, because I knew that I had the support team behind me to be able to execute the way I wanted to. And, you know, there's always, there's always, there are always things that, that, you know, I would want to go back and, and redo or have some more time with, but, I think one of the things that really sticks out to me um, is is what we were able to do with the project, given given the constraints that we had. Mm -hmm. um, I think you mentioned the uh, the blood in in the soap bubbles. I mean, that was not something uh, that was in the script. It was something that I came up with while we were on set and said, "Hey, can we? Is there a way that we can like do this and capture this?" And we took probably too much time. 
to, <laughs> to actually like put that on screen. But I think it's those little details, I think, that, um, that make this film like uh, most most people I, I would say like when they when they first see this they're they're expecting they're expecting an indie film you know when they, if they know what the film is about mm-hmm. they know the budget or whatever they're expecting what they perceive to be as an indie film and i think what they get is uh, i think what we've been able to produce is something that is is hits above that and yeah. I, and i'm i'm really happy to be able to say that with confidence yeah this it's it's a highly polished film You've got really good production values. Your sound is excellent. So often inside cars, we can run into problems with the quality of sound. And it is superbly done. The sound edit, sound mix is wonderful. But I've got to go back to the blood for a minute because I'm glad that it, you came up with the idea of mixing blood in the soap bubbles in the car wash on the day of filming because it ties in so nicely with the fact that you spent time honing in on the blood on the ground previously. So that's a nice tie-in. So that your first shot of blood is very key to what's next. And you create some really great metaphor there as well kind of like a washing away of sins and a rebirth and this kind of stuff. And, you know, okay, going to clean up, clean up our act and, and we're good now. So I really, um, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The, the, we, we always, uh, we always called the car wash scene, the come clean scene. uh, (laughs) Because it it was, was, you know, we, we were coming clean on multiple levels. The, The characters were coming clean, uh, you know, about, about, um, what was on the end, what, what they were feeling on the inside, yep. uh, it's, you know, especially, um, you know, the passenger, um, and then obviously the car was being cleaned as well. So it really, to me, and, and I think the other thing outside of just, uh, you know, the, the, the metaphor of that scene overall, um, how beautifully Anthony shot it, yeah. um, you know, it, it really, I think when I was watching it last night, I thought that it, it was, it was it was a pivotal turning point in the film for me, where uh, this is I was this is why we're watching this movie is like to see these characters and who they are and how they're transitioning in this moment of their lives mm-hmm. and uh, and it was it was really what I it made it it made it so much more meaningful to me rewatching it and seeing the scene played out again and I, I think that I hope that I hope that people see. I uh, hope that people see what you see, and I hope they see the intention that, that we put into that one. Well, I think they will, especially if they watch it more than once, because there's so many little details here, as you said before. There's so many little details in this film that you, you're going to miss them. Even if you're paying full attention, you might miss some of them, because they are subtle in many respects. One thing that is not subtle... And I don't know, first-time feature director, first-time writers, first-time feature actors, and you got an alligator. Number one, did you get your head examined before you brought an alligator in for your first feature directorial? But more than that, how well did Kathy the alligator take direction? Oh, uh, Kathy was, was by and large the, the best actor on set. Um, <laughs> That's all that matters. That's right. That's right. Um, it was, you know, uh, did I did not I did not go to therapy before we brought the alligator. <laughs> on that, um, although I probably should have, uh, you know, it was it was um, it, that that was really one of those things where Adam and Marcus uh, were asking me, "Do you really want us to film the scene around an alligator?" Because, uh, like. What, what do we, like, it's going to be very difficult for us to rewrite this whole thing if you can't get an alligator. And, uh, and so, you know, we went, we went through the process, we found a way to get, get the alligator, and, uh, and you know, it, there was a, an entire team um, uh, of wranglers um, and, uh, and specialists um, that, that were uh, really incredible on set. And, and obviously safety was the number one priority, um, you know, um, Sam, who plays Low Boy, uh, was uh, understood understood the dangers, but understood the safety measures. 
and um, really, really sold the scene with how his willingness to to uh, be close to that animal and trust that animal and trust the wranglers. And, uh, and you know, um, I think that uh, there was there was far, far, far less danger on set uh, than what comes off in the film. And uh, you know, it was uh, it was a really it was a really fun experience. And I, I think it's one of those things where. Um, you know, uh, a lot of these conversations that we're having are like, wait, you, you, you guys put an alligator in your movie. <laughs> like, what, what were you thinking? Well, you know, th- this it does take place in Florida. There's no secret about that. So an alligator would, chances an alligator might pop up somewhere in a Floridian <laughs> film are, you know, very strong. I don't think I would have expected Kathy the alligator to pop up in this manner. But it's right. fun, and it works. It works. But after you get all this great footage, you've captured it all, and you go to sit down the editing bay. What was that process like for you? Because, number one, you do have beautiful footage here. A lot of it, it's very important footage in terms of propelling the story and the, setting the tone of the human nature of the characters and your overall visual tonal bandwidth. So I'm curious about the editing process for you. Were you like editing in your head or making notes while you were actually shooting? Or did you wait till you had everything, all footage, and then sat down and went, okay, here I go? (laughs) Uh, That's a great question. So uh, I've, I've been editing um, for probably 20 years now and, and, you know, 15 plus of that, uh, professionally. So, and and I think that, um, having that experience makes me a more effective director, uh, because when one of, one of the biggest things, uh, um, that can hold up a production is, is when a director is on set and they can't move on from a scene. And I think where, where my, my, um, experience with editing has enabled me to understand uh, what it is that we've already um, uh, gotten uh, through a particular day or you know a series of days of shooting, and uh, and how I can utilize that in post to potentially mitigate some of the problems that I might run into. Um, you know, if we're uh, if if an actor's not on one night, or you know, we don't get all of the shots that were on on our list, or something like that. So I'm I'm mentally cutting the entire film in my head uh as i'm actually on set um and obviously there's there there are changes that that are made uh when i actually get to the editing room because the puzzle pieces don't actually fit you know my memory is not 100 percent um but uh but you know we're also we're also doing uh circle takes while we're there so that i have notes to reference as well um but for a film like this specifically like when i got into the editing room and I, and I had all this wonderful footage, um, it really becomes for me a process of if I'm the audience, what do I want to see in this moment? You mm-hmm. know, and, and, um, that can also then translate into, uh, what is the audience expecting to see and how can I switch things up on them so that they're actually seeing something that they didn't even expect that they wanted. We all have such like a, we've all attuned uh, to a cinematic language. Um, and I think that subverting that language at times in the editing room is, is really fun for me to do. And I think um, this film in particular was, uh, it, I, I had the opportunity to do that because of the depth of these characters is like when, maybe when, uh, when the passenger uh, has a line or um, is, is trying to convey something instead of um, just, you know, having the camera sit on him while, while he's saying his lines, uh, we're looking at Allison instead. And maybe it creates a, an emotional response in the audience that they're actually wanting to see the passenger in that moment. But as a filmmaker, I'm trying to guide them on this journey and say there's something more important here that you should be looking at So watch this, absorb this, and it's going to come back around for you. Well, one thing everybody needs, without no spoiler, but 
something everybody needs to pay attention to is when Allison, in the middle of this night, suddenly fluffs her hair and puts on more lipstick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I saw that, and I'm like, all right, this is good. And things really, at that moment, after that, we've got some heavy-hitting stuff. That's right. That's right. It's, you know, it's, 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 uh, I think uh, everyone has a different opinion about, about how to speak about this film um, in, in order not to give anything away. I am, by and large, much more conservative because, you know, um, we are just talking about the, uh, you know, the cinematic language that that's, uh, everyone, everyone understands. Mm-hmm. And so I really try and I really try and hold myself back from giving, uh, giving too much away. But yeah, th- that is, that is a, a great moment to, to be looking at and, um, you know, see, see where things are going. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of film, it is very difficult to talk about with specific instances in the film because of the way it's constructed and the way that you have built it. So we kind of have to dance around a lot of what what you and I are both thinking. Yes. <laughs> because we don't want to spoil things. We want people to watch this. <laughs> I think that's that's one of the things that's one of the things that makes this film so special is that it is um it's really and 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 I appreciate your perspective on it and um, you know, the majority of people that, that have, uh, have talked to us about this film have all been very respectful of that point because I think they're all, they're, they're all cinema lovers and, and they know that after watching this film that, you know, the twists and turns that happen in this are one of, are one of the things that make this project so special. And mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, um, get, like giving little taste, little hints here and there, making it so that people want to watch it because you the the joy of the experience of watching this movie and and getting that surprise which i don't think a lot of movies can do these days um because we're we're all so well adapted to the cinematic language um that it's uh it's 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 something it's something special so now will you stay in this thriller genre with your next project because i know you and adam and marcus you work together as a team your partners so i'm curious will you stay in this thriller genre will you direct more will you branch out into something else i'm curious where you're going to go now after this one so i have um i i think i have very eclectic taste okay Uh, so i I would love to do uh other genres i will i will uh i love putting comedy into my films but i that's the one genre that i'm going to stay away from and let better filmmakers uh, uh, tackle um, it's 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 less of my my in my wheelhouse but I think there are really funny moments in this movie um, and I really try and um, you know structure in some of those things like we talked about Colin the gas station mm-hmm. and then, you know there's some other really fun moments between uh, between the passenger and Allison uh, you know throughout the story um, but I think in general, as I look forward and uh, into my career, you know, I think genre filmmaking is, is definitely uh, a, a, like a place that I would love to, um, you know, make a lot of statements in in uh, in storytelling. And you know, we have a, a few projects that we're working on right now. We have a project in market called Push to Kill, um, which is uh, much more of an action thriller. Mm-hmm. Um, Still, still very character driven. Um, it's it's an anthology piece, um, and we're really looking at. There's there's a new app uh, that's really another app based movie. It's um, <laughs> there's a new app released into into the world that allows uh, anyone to become um, a, an assassin or allows uh, anyone else to put a contract out on another person. So if you are, uh, for example, in a uh, in corporate environment and someone's trying to um, usurp you as you go up the, the corporate chain, you could put a, a contract uh, out for their, for their life. And so it's, um, it's very dark. Yes. Um, but it is, it, but the way that Adam and Marcus have approached the story, it is a very, um, it, we, we look at how this affects people 
um, in various social uh, economic levels. And, and it's a, a fascinating story that we're all very excited to tell and bring to the screen. It's a little bit more expensive than, uh, than endangered. Mm -hmm. So we are, um, so we're, we're, we're trying to, uh, to get that project out there. We've gotten some really good response to it. Um, and then there's, there's a few other projects that we're working on as well. Um, <clears throat> there's a, uh, two horror films that, that we're writing right now. I'm writing one of them, and the guys are going to take it after I, I do a first draft. And then there's another one that they're working on um, called Sundown at Solstice Canyon, uh, which is uh, which is a movie ba uh, set in the 70s um, about a music producer who may or may not be a vampire. Um, so there's there's some fun stuff that we're working on, and I, I but I do think that the... Uh, you know, action, thriller, suspense, horror, all of those genres are, are genres that are, are very close to me. And, and I would love to continue telling stories uh, in, in that world. So now one last question for you, Drew. At the end of the day, the film is now out. You've got other ideas and other things on your plate for what you're going to work on. But now that you have gotten your first feature under your belt... What did you learn about yourself as a filmmaker, as a director, that you will now take forward into these future projects you're developing? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, there, I mean, there were, there were so many lessons that I learned on, on this project, and, and I, I will not be able to uh, enumerate all of them. I, I think, you know, one of, one of the biggest things was just... Um, Understanding that that I I'm not making these movies for myself. It, it is a it is a cathartic experience. Um, I do put so much love and passion and energy um, into all everything that I create, um, and especially um, this, these feature films. Um, and I but I think that really what I've taken away from this project, one of the biggest things, is that I'm making these. For audiences, I what I love about what I've loved about this whole experience is being able to watch this movie with an audience, being able to talk about this movie with people who, um, like yourself, Debbie, who who really enjoyed it, um, and, uh, and and that that is where I think I find um, the, the 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 biggest uh, the biggest. Um, the thing that means the most to me. And so I think that when I go into other projects, you know, I, I, there's still going to be so much of my, my attention poured into them. Um, but I'm always going to be thinking about um, the audience in, in every moment of, of the film that I create because I want to create a, a, an experience that, that um, is different. I want to create an experience that uh, people will remember I want to create an experience. I want people to know that when they come to see one of my movies, when they come to see one of Adam and Marcus's movies, that they're going to be surprised. They're going to be engaged. It's going to be something that they're going to want to watch again. And I think that that is, that is the biggest thing that I will say uh, is my takeaway after having made this one. Well, I can't wait to see what you and the boys, the whole team brings us next. This is an amazing debut for everybody to see what you are, all three of you are about. And as I said, I've got to watch it again. This is an easy movie to watch again, and in large part because it is so polished and looks so good. You know, that's half Thank the battle. So that's half the battle, you know. When you start watching a film, unless it's intentionally grainy for period and you need anamorphic looks, something like that, you want something, that, and especially in this day and age, uh, you want something that's glossy, that shines, that sparkles. And this film does that visually and draws you in immediately, at which point you've got your main characters of Allison and Mike the Passenger, who then reel you in the west, rest of the way. I 100% I, I agree with you, and thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you for the kind words. Um, I, I, it, ple it pleases me so much that, uh, that you've enjoyed this project and, uh, I, I hope, I hope the next one, uh, you know, will get you, uh, will get you into that one too. I hope so. I look forward to it and I look forward to us talking again in the future. Yes, please. Yes, please. This was a pleasure. Oh, Drew, thank you so much.
Thank you, Debbie. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.